my vision is blurred and dark as I open my eyes. I can feel immense pressure in my head as I realize that I am hanging upside down. As the clarity of my vision returns, I notice that the room I am in is completely unfamiliar to me. It looks like a dark, old and decrepit basement from an abandoned crack house, rotten wood, massive spider webs, and the smell of must surround me. My initial instinct is to scream for help, but I stop myself before I do so. No, they'll hear you, I think to myself. Whoever did this, they'll hear you if you scream. Instead, I decided to put all of my focus into trying to free myself. My body is completely bound in some sort of sticky rope. I can hear the sounds of cracking as it separates and re-sticks as I wiggle around. Whatever this stuff is, there is no freeing myself from it. I begin to panic as claustrophobia begins to set in. The idea of being bound and immobilized has always been a terrifying thought for me. The pressure of the blood rushing to my head from hanging upside down for so long soon begins to affect me. My vision starts to go blurry again, and the weight on my lungs begins to strain my breathing. Coupled with the anxiety of being in this predicament, I begin to lose it. My composure breaks as I begin to scream and cry. It's too much for me. Even if it means some psychopath comes and finishes me off, I can't stay like this any longer. Maybe I'll get lucky if my kidnapper isn't here. Maybe my screams will be heard by a passerby, and they find me here, wherever here is. I scream and cry, and scream as loud as my pressured lungs will allow. My visions soon begin to darken once again, but before I pass out, I notice something. There is a wooden staircase ahead of me and I soon begin to hear the sounds of footsteps. They aren't heavy. More so, they sound like someone is walking with tap dancing shoes. Are you awake, dear? I hear a calm, distant voice from upstairs. The figure begins to slowly walk down the stairs, metallic tapping with each step. I become speechless as I notice exactly who, uh, or what the figure is. Whatever this thing is, it's not human. At first glance, because of my affected vision, it appears to be a tall slender woman. Long tangled hair covers her face as she slowly approaches. As I pay closer attention, however, I notice two arms holding onto the railing. And... Two more arms grabbing the ceiling above her. What I thought were tap dancing shoes are revealed as long bony legs with barb like claws protruding from her feet. As I scream at the sight, she lifts her head to stare at me, massive mandibles opening wide as she lets out a horrible wail, her six pairs of black eyes opening wide as she does so. She rushes over to me, two clawed hands grabbing my body and the other two grabbing my face. I can feel the warmth of urine as I lose all composure. I panic at her upside down face coming close to my own. The massive mandibles lock onto my face, digging into the four corners as I feel the horrible sensation of a fleshy disgusting tube enter my mouth. I struggle as I feel some kind of fluid go down. Well, up. My throat my gag reflex failing me. As she finishes her violation, she backs away and retracts the mandibles into her face. They fold inward, and eventually her face looks just like a normal woman. Her many eyes close shut, but then she opens the two located in the normal area where human eyes would be. No longer are the eyes a tar-like black like before, but a regular pair of brown human eyes. As I observe her now human-looking face, 
I recognize who she is. It all comes back to me. Who she is, and where I was before I woke up here. You, I say as I try to forcefully vomit whatever was now inside of me. I had met her at the coffee shop where I work. She came in, struck up a conversation, and we had immediately hit it off. By the end of the night, I found myself at her apartment and in her bed. I remember after we did the deed, I began to get lightheaded. I went to the bathroom and splashed water on my face. As I stared at my reflection, my vision went dark and I passed out right then and there. That was the last thing I remembered before I woke up, hanging upside down by what I previously thought was a rope, but am now convinced is some kind of webbing. Hello, dear, she says in a calm and relaxed tone. Thank you so much for such a wonderful time. She turns around, folding her extra arms behind her back and retracts her claws into her fingers. As she walks back up the stairs, she stops and says one last thing. I know you'll take good care of them. I'm so happy I met you. You'll make sure they're well fed and grow to be big and strong. Every horrible possibility of what she meant races through my mind. I begin to panic once again, screaming and crying out for someone, anyone, to help. I soon begin to feel something in my stomach. Oh, no, I cry out loud. The pain is excruciating, and it feels like something is tearing me up from inside. I scream as loud as I can and I feel bile coming from my throat, pouring onto the floor. Almost immediately, I pass out and awaken in a bed. I sit up quickly and realize I'm in my room, in my bed. I begin to sob as I realize that it was all a horrible dream. I walk into my bathroom and splash water on my face. I stare at my reflection and realize I look like absolute shit. My complexion is pale like a corpse, and the rings under my eyes add to that comparison. Suddenly, I gag and bile expels from my mouth. The pain is unlike anything else. I grab my abdomen reflexively and notice something odd. I feel around with my hands and realize there are dozens of tiny lumps. They are moving around under my skin, inside my body. I scream and scream as they move their way up my body until they reach my throat. Soon after, dozens of bird-sized spiders emerge from my mouth as their sharp clawed feet scratch the inside of my throat as they climb their way out. I try to scream, but my voice is blocked as one after the other. These small monsters are birthed from my esophagus. Once again, I pass out from the pain, the panic, and the exhaustion. I awake, still on the bathroom floor. The lights are still on, and I feel all around my body. I feel... skinny. Like all of the fat and muscle has been sucked out of me. I am barely strong enough to stand, but I somehow muster the strength to use the bathroom sink to pick myself up. In my reflection, I notice that I look even worse than before. I'm even paler, but now black liquid stains my mouth, chin, and chest. I hear shuffling come from my bedroom, and I slowly approach the door. Shaking, I open it, and the shock of what I see leaves me speechless. All around the room, there are children. Small, normal-looking toddlers, completely naked and covered in black slime, sit and stand all around the room. I have no words. I have no idea what to do. I try to speak, but only a small peep comes out. As soon as they hear the sounds of my words failing to come out, they focus their attention on me. There is an uneasy silence as I stare at them. 
and they stare at me. Suddenly, four more sets of eyes open wide as they all let out high-pitched shrieks, their mouths opening wide to reveal horrible-looking mandibles. They rush over to me, and I scream as they latch on. I fall to the floor and mentally prepare myself to be eaten alive. But that doesn't happen. They are... Hugging me. Tiny arms are wrapped around my arms, legs, and body as they rub their tiny, horrible-looking faces on me. I want to scream, but I don't want to set them off. One of them looks at me right in the eyes, a creepy-looking smile forming as it retracts its mandibles back into its face, the tiny black eyes staring into me. I suppose this means today is my first Father's Day.